River West, fourth, fifth graders. Teacher Tom here. Hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining. Um, I just realized it is five days away from Christmas. Can you believe that? Five days away from celebrating the birth of Jesus, one of the three big events we celebrate as Christians. Uh, and if you're not, if you're kind of wondering what, what are the other two, well, there was the death of Jesus on the crucifixion where he died for our sins. And then there was the resurrection on Easter Sunday. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the big three coming up. So look forward to it. Um, so you're probably all kind of familiar with the Christmas story and everything around surrounding the birth of Jesus, you know, the manger scene, lots of stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times we kind of wonder, why, why did Jesus have to even come? Why did, you know, the, the past two weeks we've kind of talked about this in the different devotions about Jesus being the light the light of the world, the wise men got to see the star, the Simeon got to see Jesus. So they want just things like that, the bringing the light of the world to the world through Jesus. So a good verse for the season right now is Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, John 8, 12. Great verse. So if you're catching a the theme, we're talking about light. And so Today, even more so. So why would the Bible use light to basically remind us and talk to us about God? Well, it has a lot to do with why Jesus came. Today, we're going to look at three functions of light and really how they relate to Jesus, our Messiah. So uh, hopefully, Gr Teacher Greg is putting this up on the screen for you. But light helps us see things more clearly. Light comforts and brings peace. And light eliminates darkness. So one of the examples I like to talk about light, um, leave from PDX Portland Airport here quite a bit, and one of the things, especially in December here in Oregon, it's dark, it's cloudy, it's gloomy, and you get to the airport and it might be rainy, but you get in the plane and you take off, and not too, not too long after you take off, you are above the clouds, and you're above the clouds with beautiful sunshine. And so... I always think of that as, you know, things may seem kind of cloudy and gray, but God is always up there. The, the sun is always shining. We may not see it a lot. We may not see it a lot in December in Oregon, but it's always there. God is always there shining on us. We just have to get up there and see it. So good example. Um, so light obviously helps us see things more clearly. So if you, if you ever lost power in your home and you can't find those thing, what are you going to do? You're going to look for a flashlight. You're going to find something they can light it. Sometimes you might light candles or something like that. But light, it really kind of helps us see things more clearly. Well, Jesus being the light, he helps us see God more clearly. Jesus illuminated a lot of things about what people were doing, a lot of the uh, just old traditions and just really pointing out sin in our lives. Jesus is God in flesh. So we're able to see God's character through action, through Jesus. So anytime we want to know who God is, and we just look to the Son, Jesus, who came to us. So another verse, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, Colossians 1, 15. And another verse, the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustainable all things, sustaining, excuse me, sustaining all things by His powerful word. So light also brings comfort and peace. If you ever gone camping, a lot of times the first thing you're going to do, light a lantern, and you're probably going to light up a campfire. So bringing that comfort, that peace, uh, bringing the, you know, in a cold night, being able to just have a fire, if you've got a fireplace at home, that type of thing. But Jesus, he brings that light, and Jesus gives us peace that we can't, we can't get anywhere else. Um, so without Jesus, we're obviously separated from eternal life. We're separated from hope. Um, but Jesus, he brings that hope. He, his, by his death and resurrection, he offers us that hope. So us knowing the whole story, but knowing that Jesus is coming in this season, just helps us remember that even more. Another verse, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 So the only way that we are justified, the only way that we have peace with God is through Jesus. And Jesus is coming in our tradition in five days. So um, another thing that light does is it eliminates darkness. It's the opposite of, of, of dark. Um, right now, we've got all these lights set up in here to kind of make sure my face is bright. You can see me on the camera. 
Um, so light sep eliminates that darkness. So seeing a sunrise, it's magnificent to see a great sunrise and, and just see that light come up and start the day. Um, Jesus came to defeat that darkness, the sin and death. There's really both related to darkness that Jesus came to eliminate. And Jesus paid the price, and he won over sin and darkness. He conquered the sin on the cross, and we celebrate that. And in him, we have victory over darkness and sin. A couple more verses for you. O oh, death, where's your victory? O oh, death, where's your sting? 1 Corinthians 5, 15, 55. Another verse. It has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 2 Timothy 1.10. Again, staying with that light theme. It speaks to it all, all through the Bible. So conclusion, Jesus came to be the light of the world. We started off with why did Jesus come? We talked about light. Jesus came as the light of the world. He came so that we could see God. He came so that we could be reconciled to God and experience eternal peace and hope. He came so that we could have forgiveness of sins. All things hugely important. Let us praise Jesus this Christmas. Let us think about that and understand there's a lot of things. There's a lot of busyness. There's a lot of parties. Well, COVID maybe not, but a lot of things going on. A lot of shopping, a lot of gifts. Let us remember that Jesus came to bring the light of the world and to give us hope and peace. Um, some more questions that hopefully Teacher Greg's going to bring up. And before I go farther, Teacher Greg, the guy that plays the guitar here in the fourth and fifth grade, uh, he's doing all this work with the videoing and uh, putting the images here, even putting the background. I'm not sure what the background is, but he puts all that up there, and he does a fantastic job. So if you're sitting there on the couch and you're watching this, you want to give him a round of applause, I'm sure he'll feel it. Um, but questions that you're going to be able to ask, ask and talk about in your family. And I, I, in my opinion, this is one of the best ways for you to learn. You can listen to me in this video, but I think talking amongst your family, your mother and father, your parents, kids, brothers, sisters, etc. In your own words, explain why Jesus is the light of the world. What does it mean that Jesus is the image of the invisible God? How has Jesus brought peace to your life? And what does it mean that Jesus conquered sin and death? So good questions to talk over. And remember, next time you get on a plane and you take off out of this cloudy gray and you see this sunlight up above the clouds, remember, just think about God shining down on us. So I just want to pray for you guys. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for coming. We thank you for your son Jesus coming for us. And we just help us to remember, help us to focus on what the reason for the reason we're celebrating Christmas. And I just thank you for all of these fourth and fifth graders and their lives and this season. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.